I've just added these new projects and you'll see them down here in the new thing called Thread Intelligence. And last time I talked about the first one, Sticks, and I want to talk about the next three here, which is very nice. So Sticks, which we talked about last time, this is all how open source Thread Intelligence is distributed. Sticks is the format for information about a threat. So it's an XML file, or it's not XML, it's a JSON that has indication, information about files. And now we're going to talk about Taxi, which is the um, transport protocol used to move threat intelligence. And as we're going to see, this uses XML. So Taxi is here, Trusted Automated Exchange of Intelligence Information. And I, there are proprietary ones. When you subscribe to something like an expensive uh, endpoint protection solution, it will come with their custom threat feed. But there are several open sourced ones, and that's what we're going to use, of course. So the first thing, you do need a Linux machine for this, by the way. So if you don't have a Linux machine, that's why I moved this up here. Um, the first half of this course, all you needed was a web browser to do this stuff. But from now on, you'll need actually to pretty much to have a Linux and Windows machine available. So here's the project where you set up Windows and Linux machines. If you don't have them from some other course, if you already have some version of Windows and some version of Linux, it's probably fine. Doesn't really matter which version of either one you have. Um, but what I have here is instructions to set up a Windows 10 machine and a, um, a Debian 10 machine. But uh, you can run them any old place and you'll be fine. Anyway, for this stuff, you're going to need a Linux machine. So for Taxi, I've got a Linux machine here. I've configured, I've connected to it with SSH, and I've already installed curl. So to perform a Taxi request, curl is the um, command line web browser in Linux. You can send a web request from the command line. And the point is, if you use a web browser like the one I'm using here, you type in a URL like samsclass.info, and it builds the request, but you don't have much control over the request. And with curl, you can control every bit of the request. So here, I specify the location, which is to go to this service called hailataxi.com, taxi discovery service, and that's just one of those free taxi servers that somebody has set up just so everybody can get some threat intelligence. It's going to send XML data, and you have to have this special header, XTaxi content type, to tell it I'm using taxi messages. It is a protocol that moves over HTTP. So after you've done that, then you have to have data, and the data is XML formatted. It looks like HTML with these tags with less than and greater than signs delimiting them, and it is in a special format. And the thing I'm doing here is getting a discovery request. All the rest of it is boilerplate, but um, I'm asking it to give me discovery. And we'll see what that looks like. It's this blob of horrible XML formatted data, which is pretty hard to read. Technically, there's useful information in here, but in practice, it's pretty hard to read in this format. So that's not the most fun way to do it. So what we're going to do is use BERT. Whenever you have HTTP-based protocols, BERT is the primary tool for that. We use it in the web application hacking class, and it is great for all purposes. So here I've got burp. And so you click Next to start, and then Start burp. Burp is a proxy that will intercept web traffic so you can modify and examine it. So here's burp. You go to the Proxy tab. By default, intercept is turned on, and you don't want that. That will block traffic. You want to turn intercept off. And then you want to go to Options. And you see by default it's listening on 127.0.0.1. Now I'm running Burp on a Mac, and I'm running Curl on a virtual Linux machine. So if I listen only on 127.0.0.1, I'm only listening for traffic from the Mac. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to listen to a more public address here. Now if I go to my Debian machine, I could do a trace route to some public server like 1.1.1.1, which is one of the Cloudflare servers. Anything on the internet will do. And it'll show you the route out. So my first hop out is 172.16.123.1. That's an address on my Mac. All the traffic from my virtual machine passes through my Mac on the way out. So if I listen on that address, I'll be able to reach it from the, uh, 
from the virtual machine, so I used that one, 172.16.123.1. That's where it's listening. And now, for example, if I could test it by pinging that, which is essentially what that last uh, trace route really did, ping 172.16.123.1, and you see, I can reach that from this machine. So now I can run that same request, but I think I'll just paste it in again to make it look pretty. All right, and I want to add the um, proxy to it. I can tell curl to send data to the proxy this way. You add a minus X flag to the request. So let me clear and put it here. All right. So this is the same request before to hailataxi.com with a discovery request, but I've added an extra line minus X going to that proxy. So now it will not send this directly to the server. It'll send it to a proxy server who is expected to forward it. That's what I want. Now the result is the same because I turned off intercept. The proxy server is letting traffic through. So as far as this curl command is concerned, it worked the same as before. All that happened is it passed through an extra hop on the way to the server, and it doesn't care about that. So it worked. But the point is now, I've got it in burp, and I can examine it. If I go to HTTP history, here's the request. And now I can just see the request in a prettier format, and I can see the response in a prettier format. So here's the request posting uh, with the discovery request. And here's the response. And remember, the response was just a blog of ugly uh, XML, but now Burp has prettified it up, so it's easier to read. And now you can see it's nicely colored it, so it tells me a bunch of boring stuff, but the main thing it tells me is services. This is discovery. Discovery means I'm asking the server, what kind of data do you have? And it's telling what kind of services do you offer? And it says, well, I offer a discovery service, a collection management service, and a polling service. Those are the three services it offers. Now, discovery is what I just did. That's this service, which tells me what services you have. So I'm done with that. That's not interesting. Collection management will tell me what collections of data are on this server. So that's important. And once I find a collection I like, poll is how you request data from the, the collection. So you would use them in order. We just used discovery. So the next thing we want to do is collection management. And um, all right. And it'll tell me. Uh, I guess none of the rest of this matters. So collection management is available there. Um, so let me go to my instructions. So now I can copy that over. And I can, uh, there, here's the two things I have to do. I have to change it to taxi data, and let's see why. Here's discovery. Um, And just collection management uses, ah, uh, here it is, the address. The address is taxi-data. So you have to go to this address to get collection management. And my first request went to taxi discovery service. So this is telling me if you want to get collection, a list of collections, you have to go to taxi data instead and then send a collection request. So you take this request, right click and send to repeater. This is how you modifying repeater request in BERT. Now you can modify it. So the modifications are highlighted in red there. Taxi discovery service should change to taxi data. And collection information request is what I want instead of discovery request. Collection information. All right. That's all you have to do. And now when I send that, I get a response, and the response here gives me the collections. Here's a collection named guest.abuse.ch, and here's one called Cybercrime Tracker, and Emerge In Threats with Emerging Spelled Wrong, and Emerging Threats with Emerging Spelled Correctly, and Lehigh EDU from some college somewhere, Malware Domain List, Blue Meiji D Tor Exit, a list of Tor Exit nodes. Um, for the last seven days only, D Shield Block List, and Fish Tank. And Fish Tank is the one I want to use. These others 
seem to be old and not really in business anymore, most of the ones I tried, but Fish Tank is still running. These are known fishing sites, and that's what you'll get out of here. So we are going to query fishtank.com. So you can see it uses the same URL going to Taxi Data, and you can pull it there. So all we have to do to query Fish Tank is make another copy of this request, send to repeater, and now um, this part is all fine. All we have to do is replace the bottom part with a longer request. So this, instead of doing a collection information request, we do a poll request. And a poll request has a few more parameters. It has a beginning timestamp and an ending timestamp to tell you what time range you want to poll over. And then another parameter says full data. The only one I ever should have used is full. The others don't seem to do anything. So, and you notice I've taken the time in 2018, 525. I just played around with it to try to find a small one. And I've restricted it to just a 10 minute range from 2 o'clock to 2.10. And all times are in Zulu, universal time, by the way. So in this 10 minute range, there was just one block of data uploaded. And that's the block of data we're going to get with this pull request. So if we run that, it's done. And here's the response. And so here's a fairly large but not overwhelming amount of data. And so you can see there's a header block telling you what kind of data something about general information here. And then you've got a whole series of indicators. Here's the beginning of an indicator. And it is a malicious URL with part of the URL here. Indicator description has a complete description of what's happening here. This URL with the whole URL was identified by Fish Tank. And then there's more information here, like the time it was detected and such. So there's a U malicious URL. And down here is um, someplace there's going to be another one. Description. I could use the search engine, actually. Let's look for indicator description. There's a search engine in Burp. I can put it here. All right. It'll highlight them nicely for me. And uh, this has Cybox objects. Anyway. So there's some URLs in there. And as you can see, it's prettier than it used to be, but it's still pretty annoying to use in this form. So that's the first project. And there's some flags you can find here. All right. But we're going to use better tools in the later projects. So I'm going to stop this.